Hi guys, this video is going to be covering chemical cells, fuel cells, the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, and advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells. We'll finish off with a summary. In chemistry and physics, we use the word cell differently to in biology. When we talk about cells, we're talking about a system that produces electricity, specifically through a series of chemical reactions taking place between two electrodes and an electrolyte. If you've seen our videos on electrolysis, you'll have been introduced to the terms electrode and electrolyte, where an electrode is a solid rod that's made from metal or graphite that conducts electricity to the electrolyte, where an electrolyte is a compound in its liquid state or in solution, which contains mobile ions and conducts electricity. The difference between a cell and the setup for an electrolysis reaction is that in an electrolysis reaction, you need to provide an external source of electricity. However, a cell produces its own. Batteries contain chemical cells, meaning that inside a battery, you have a series of chemical reactions taking place between two electrodes and an electrolyte that is causing it to produce electricity. Specifically, chemical reactions in a cell produce a potential difference across the cell. A potential difference is just another name for a voltage. If a voltage is set up across the two electrodes and the cell is then connected to an external electrical circuit, this potential difference will allow a flow of charge, causing a current to flow through the cell. By connecting the cell to an electrical circuit, what we are doing is creating a completed circuit, including the external electrical circuit, the two electrodes and the electrolyte. As the electrolyte conducts electricity, this makes up a complete circuit. Current can therefore flow around this complete circuit. And if we add a component to our electrical circuit, for example a bulb as we have in this diagram, the current can provide electrical energy to this component, meaning that we can use the cell and the chemical reactions within the cell in order to power this bulb. A current will flow through the circuit and through the cell until one of the reactants within the cell is completely used up. We will observe this as the battery going dead, as the chemical reactions that produce electricity will stop. One useful specific type of chemical cell is a fuel cell. A fuel cell produces electricity by reacting fuel and oxygen together, but without combustion. This is therefore a different process to just burning the fuel in air, which would also lead to a reaction between the fuel and oxygen. For example, hydrogen oxygen fuel cells react oxygen with hydrogen in order to produce electricity. And we can see a representation of what happens in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in this diagram. The electricity produced in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell can be used to power any electrical device that this fuel cell is connected to, for example, an electric car. Hydrogen oxygen fuel cells can be used to produce electricity for any purpose. We can now look in a bit more detail at what's happening in the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell that's allowing it to produce electricity. Here we have a diagram of the cell. What you can see first is that we provide hydrogen and oxygen to the fuel cell and that the reactions that take place within the fuel cell produce water as a product. Our reactants are therefore our hydrogen and our oxygen. Our cell is connected to a circuit, and this circuit connects the two electrodes together. In this example, it is made up of wires and a bulb, and the fuel cell is therefore being used to power this bulb. What we have in the centre of the fuel cell is a membrane, this membrane allows a transfer of H plus ions. And finally, we can identify the flow of electrons through the fuel cell and the external circuit. These are produced in the chemical reactions that happen within the fuel cell. And it's the flow of these charged particles that leads to the production of a current. In a fuel cell like this, the cathode is the positive electrode and the anode is the negative electrode. The charge flows from the anode, which is the negatively charged electrode on the left hand side, where electrons are taken away from hydrogen, round to the cathode, which is the positively charged electrode, on the right hand side. This is where electrons are given away to the oxygen reactant or the water product. If you've watched our videos on electrolysis, you might be thinking this is the wrong way round. And this is because we name the electrodes in a different way for a fuel cell to an electrolysis. And for a fuel cell, we name the electrodes the opposite way round to that we do in electrolysis. This is because in electrolysis we don't produce electricity. We instead provide electricity from an external source. In fact, this electricity comes from a cell. And in this diagram here, 
you can see the circuit symbol for a cell, which is two vertical lines, one of which is longer than the other. The cell symbol tells you that the electrode that is on the same side as the longer side of the cell symbol is going to be the anode, whilst the electrode on the shorter side of the cell symbol is the cathode, where the anode is positively charged and therefore attracts negatively charged anions, and the cathode is negatively charged and therefore attracts positively charged cations. However, in an electrical cell, when you produce your own electricity, the cathode is a positive electrode and the anode is the negative electrode. Therefore, in the fuel cell, the anode, which is the negative electrode, has an excess of negatively charged electrons. This means that the electrons will flow through an external circuit from the anode to the positively charged cathode. So in this diagram, we can recognise our anode and our cathode. And we know that our anode is going to have an excess in negatively charged electrons, giving it an overall negative charge, and that these electrons will therefore flow through an external circuit via a bowl which they will power to the positively charged electrode, the cathode. We can write an equation for the overall reaction that takes place in the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. Based on the fact that we're going to be reacting hydrogen, which exists as a diatomic molecule, with oxygen, which also exists as a diatomic molecule. In order to produce our product, which we've seen is water, or H2O, we can therefore balance this equation by adding a 2 in front of hydrogen and a 2 in front of water. And if you look closely, you'll see that this is balanced for hydrogen and oxygen. We know that hydrogen and oxygen are gases. And in the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, we also produce water as a gas. We produce water vapour. This is because the reaction is very exothermic, meaning that it produces a lot of heat energy. This heat is sufficient to boil our water from a liquid into a gas. What is happening in our hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is that hydrogen is being oxidised in order to produce water. We know that hydrogen is being oxidised because it's gaining oxygen, and we can therefore describe our overall reaction within the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell as an oxidation process. In the first half of the video, we introduced a chemical cell as a system that produces electricity through a series of chemical reactions between two electrodes and an electrolyte and then look specifically at the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, which reacts hydrogen with oxygen without combustion in order to produce electricity. We can now start to think about the advantages and disadvantages of using fuel cells in order to produce electricity. Some of the advantages of using fuel cells are firstly that hydrogen fuel cells are much more efficient than power stations, as hydrogen and oxygen fuel cells have an efficiency of over 80%. What this means is that 80% of the energy produced by the hydrogen and oxygen fuel cell is in the useful form of electrical energy. Whereas in power stations, lots of energy is wasted. This is either because energy is lost or because it's produced in the wrong form. For example, if a process is used to generate electrical energy, instead produce a lot of heat. A huge advantage of hydrogen and oxygen fuel cells is that they produce no harmful waste products. The only byproducts of the reactions that happen within the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell are water and heat. This is a big advantage over power stations that burn fossil fuels, as these will produce considerable amounts of pollutants and greenhouse gases. Finally, fuel cells can be used to replace traditional batteries. Traditional batteries are highly polluting to dispose of. This is because they contain lots of metal. For example, cadmium, lead and mercury. They also contain acids, and therefore batteries need to be disposed of carefully, as the metals and acids can affect the environment if they are exposed to it. However, hydrogen and oxygen fuel cells are much better, because they just contain hydrogen and oxygen, and as we've said, they just produce water and heat. However, there are some downsides or difficulties to using hydrogen and oxygen fuel cells. For example, hydrogen gas is very explosive, this can make it very difficult to store it safely, especially considering that the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell itself produces heat, which will increase the risk of explosion. Secondly, hydrogen oxygen fuel cells require a constant supply of hydrogen, and this hydrogen needs to be produced either from the burning of hydrocarbons or through electrolysis. Unfortunately, the hydrocarbons that need to be burnt to produce hydrogen often come from fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are a finite resource. Also, the burning of fossil fuels will produce pollutants. Alternatively, hydrogen can be produced through an electrolysis process. However, this electrolysis process requires lots of energy, and the production of this energy is likely to come from the burning of fossil fuels. 
So we'll have the same problems with fossil fuels being finite resources and that the burning of them produces a considerable amount of pollutants. Therefore, even though the hydrogen option fuel cell doesn't produce any pollutants when it's used, the production of the hydrogen for the fuel cell is likely to. The third disadvantage of the hydrogen option fuel cells is that they are new technologies and that our current cars are designed to run on petrol or diesel, for example. It can be expensive to develop and install the necessary technology that's required in order for us to use fuel cells. For example, it can be difficult to figure out how to store our hydrogen safely. So far, we've seen that within a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, hydrogen is oxidised in order to produce water. More correctly, we can describe the reaction in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell as a redox reaction, as we don't only have the oxidation of hydrogen to produce water, but our hydrogen is also reduced. When reduction and oxidation happen simultaneously, we can describe that reaction as a redox reaction. Let's look at what's happening at each of the electrodes within the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. If you remember from earlier in the video, we labelled our electrodes as our anode on our left hand side, which is our negatively charged electrode in a fuel cell, and our cathode on the right hand side, which in a fuel cell is our positively charged electrode. Remembering this is the other way around to an electrolysis reaction. Our anode is negatively charged because it has an excess of electrons. This is because at the negative anode, hydrogen loses electrons in order to form H plus ions. And these electrons that are lost from hydrogen, therefore instead present at the electrode, giving it its negative charge. We can write a half equation for what's happening at the anode, remembering that hydrogen exists as a diatomic molecule. What will happen is that our hydrogen is going to form instead two H plus ions and that in order to balance charge, we're also going to produce two electrons, which I'm going to write here using the shorthand E minor. If you've seen our video on reduction and oxidation reactions, you'll know that we can describe any process in which electrons are lost as an oxidation, and therefore here we would describe the hydrogen as being oxidised, as it's losing electrons. So how about at the positively charged electrode, at the cathode? At the positively charged cathode, Oxygen gains electrons from the cathode and reacts with H plus ions from the electrolyte in order to form water. A hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is designed with this membrane in the middle, which allows the transfer of H plus ions from the anode to the cathode. At the cathode, we also add in oxygen. So we can start by writing our half equation by adding our diatomic molecule of oxygen. What happens is this oxygen reacts with H plus ions from our electrolyte, where our electrolyte is present within this membrane, in order to produce water, H2O. You can immediately see that one molecule of oxygen is going to produce two molecules of water in order to balance our oxygens, and therefore that we need to react our one molecule of diatomic oxygen with four H plus ions in order to produce our two molecules of water. Finally, we need to add electrons in order to balance the charge. And as we have four positively charged H plus ions, we need four negatively charged electrons in order to give the reactant left-hand side an overall neutral charge, the same as the right-hand side product side. We can therefore see from this half equation that oxygen is gaining electrons from the cathode and reacting with H plus ions from the electrolyte and making water. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So therefore, in this example, the oxygen is being reduced as it's gaining these electrons. We can write an overall reaction equation for the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell by combining our two half equations. Firstly, we need to double our first example so that we have the same number of electrons in both half equations. This gives us that two molecules of hydrogen will react at the anode to produce four H plus ions and four electrons. At this point, we can add our half equations together. And as always, we start by drawing one reaction arrow and then writing all species that appear on the left-hand side of their half equation on the left-hand side of our big arrow. So we have 2H2 from the oxidation half equation and from our reduction half equation, we have four electrons, a molecule of oxygen and four H plus ions. From our oxidation half equation, we have four H plus ions and four electrons on the product side. And we also have two molecules of water from our reduction half equation. At this point, we can cancel anything that appears on both sides. So we can cancel out the H plus ions and the electrons. And then you can see that this gives us the overall reaction equation 
for the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, which is that two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen in order to give two molecules of water. Where in this fuel cell all substances are in the gas phase. The important point is that our hydrogen is oxidised as it loses electrons and simultaneously our oxygen is reduced as it gains electrons. And this transfer of electrons allows electrons to flow through the fuel cell and the external circuit, therefore providing a flow of current and a source of electricity. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.